Finally tonight, Stoke-on-Trent has always been known for its pots, but at one point, it was also known for its pits. Well, Rebecca Wood has been back to the city to find out a little bit more about its coal mining heritage. These rusted and decaying ruins nestled on a North Staffordshire hillside are a reminder of our industrial past. Chatterley Whitfield Colliery was the powerhouse of the potteries, a record-breaking pit. 1937 saw the first ever production of a million tonnes anywhere in the UK of coal. And this was the jewel of the crown of the North Staffordshire mining. For over a hundred years, thousands of men and boys spent their working lives underground in cramped and filthy conditions. Hard work, wet, dirty. I loved it. From the first day I went down, I loved it. I was frightened, but I did like it. And now some of those former pitmen want to save Chatterley Whitfield and preserve this relic of Stoke's mining past. Well, once it's gone, it's gone. It's a history, it's a history of the potteries. But as nature slowly reclaims the land, time is running out for this crumbling industrial giant. It's a special day at the colliery. Twice a year, the friends of Chatterley Whitfield take visitors round the pit where they used to work because they think this site is worth saving. This is one of the most endangered historic sites in the country. It's crumbling and will cost millions to preserve. I think people, young people who've never experienced anything like this need to be reminded of the past, same as anything. History's history and it, you know, we should remember it. This was the largest colliery in North Staffordshire. In Victorian Britain, coal was king and the land around here was rich with the stuff. And without it, the potteries may never have been born. The potteries needed coal to fuel the furnaces to fire the pots. So without the pits, there might never have been any pots. Many collieries were demolished when they shut down, so this site is special. It's a time capsule. Where, where else, anywhere in the UK or even the Europe, could you find such a site like this? These huge wheels sat on top of mine shafts burrowed hundreds of feet underground. They lowered men down and hauled the coal up. This beautiful old ruin is the Hesketh shaft. It was sunk to almost 2,000 feet, which is twice as deep as the Eiffel Tower is high. And this magnificent piece of engineering could raise 300 tonnes of coal an hour, but that was a long time ago. No coal's been mined here for over 40 years. It's so silent and still. It's really hard to imagine what it would be like as a noisy, busy, working colliery. It would be like Armageddon during its heyday because you were talking roughly about 4,000 people used to work here above ground and below ground. Where we're standing now, we couldn't have stood because it's a main road where traffic would come across and obviously trains would go left to right. You've got your pipes all over, had steam pipes, hissing and making noises and bursting and clanking and banging of the cages coming up. Its towering conical slag heap dominated the local skyline. Mining was a way of life in Stoke. It was dangerous work, but that didn't stop young men following in their father's footsteps. My father didn't want me to come in the pit because he had, had an accident and he, he was dead against me coming, but I wanted to come because you were getting good money. And when you're young, that's what you go after, isn't it? And it's money that's needed now to preserve this heritage so future generations can appreciate what these miners went through. So before mechanisation came along, it would have been the pick and shovel. And some of the seams were that uh, narrow, they would have been on their side with a pick, uh, probably seven and a half hours a day. Uh, we'll say went down at six o'clock in the morning, they were spent all the time on the ground. And the first trip down the shaft is one thing that sticks in all young miners' memories. The worst part is actually uh, is going down in the cage, really, because uh, everything's just totally black. I looked at that cage when it was going down when I was doing my training, and I thought, I don't want to go down in that. Because the cages travelled at 33 feet a, a second with men in them. And you saw the men there one second, and next minute, whoop, where are they gone? Yeah, it was frightening at first, but you got used to it in the end. Many were only teenage lads when they first went down the pit, and it definitely wasn't a job for the faint-hearted. Very, very scary at first, because it's low, it can be three foot high, four foot high. In them days, it was all 
chocks and bores, it wasn't mechanised phases, it was just the old type mining. Most men knew within a week whether they were suited to the challenges of life down the pit. Yeah, it wasn't a very nice environment because the air that you were breathing may have been breathed by 200 men by the time it got to you because the air only went one way, went down one shaft and up another shaft uh, along the coal face. So if somebody opened an orange at the bottom of the coal face, you would smell it at the top of the coal face and be really jealous. It was dirty work. They'd finished their shift black as the coal they dug. You were black, from head to toe you were black. If you were working where you just had, if it was red hot, you'd have just a little pair of shorts on. So obviously all your body was absolutely black. And it was as dangerous as it was dirty. Well, the sad part about it was uh, when your mates had an accident and were killed or severely injured. So it's, it's, it's life down the pit. But despite the sacrifices made by generations of miners, cheap oil in the 1950s made coal less economic. Collieries began to close and in 1977, Chatley Whitfield shut its doors. It was this big loss when this closed. A lot stayed in mining, but they moved to different areas. You never got the attachment as you had when they were at Chatley Whitfield. It wasn't just the people that worked at the colliery. It was the people that supplied the colliery, the wagon drivers, the train drivers, and it fanned out all over the place. Though that way of life is long gone, these ruins still stand as a stark reminder of a once great industry. But some ex-miners and friends of Chatley Whitfield say this can't continue to crumble. It's important because it's the last example of a mine within the UK because it's got buildings ranging from the 1880s way up to the 1950s. It's the most complete site. But time is running out to preserve this site and the people that know it best want to save it before it's too late, starting with the most salvageable parts, like the Hesketh powerhouse which brought coal from seam to surface. There's a lot of people here could do a lot of repair work and uh, get the thing back. You've got the old steam winder still there. And if they could actually uh, get access into that building, we could actually uh, bring it back to life. I'd like to see it carry on, and I'd like to see behind me the Eskets that open to visitors. The powerhouse open so people can have a look inside and what a winding engine, what everything was like in days gone by. Their dream of securing a future for this giant of Britain's industrial past will be the toughest of tasks, taking money, passion, and the same hard graft they showed as working miners. That's a really fascinating story. Well, there's more on the potteries this week on the BBC because you lot have been telling us your stories and they'll be featured.